Hello everybody and welcome to our daily devotional time together. I am Allie Cobb, Director of Family Ministries here at St. John's United Methodist Church and welcome to our daily devotional time together. Today is Tuesday, August 6th, 2024 and this is your daily devotional time together. This is our point midday where we get to pause together as a community of faith, share in the upper room at daily devotional with one another, share in some prayer, scripture, and reflection. So if you're joining me now live or a little bit later on in the day, if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment below, we always like to know who stopped by and welcome. Hope everybody is having a good start to their Tuesday. Today we'll be in Judges, so if anybody would like to follow along, you are more than welcome to do so. We will be in Judges. It's a bit of a lengthy scripture today. I always like to let people kind of know where we're going with it and everything, but it will be a little bit longer today. Today's voting day. After devotional, I'm going to go and vote. I'll have the kids with me. Wish me luck. Good morning, Linda. It's good to see you. Good morning, Shirley. And good morning, Barb and Chris Mueller. It's good to see all of you here today. It's a little bit cooler here in Kansas City, too, which I'm not sad about. <laughs> I like it a little bit cooler. Give everybody another minute or two before we begin. Book of Judges. So if you want to listen along, feel free to. If you want to follow along at home, we'll be in Judges chapter 16. Okay, let us begin. So we'll be in Judges 16, verses 4 through 22. I will be reading out of the New Revised Standard Version updated edition. And here is our scripture for today. After this, he fell in love with a woman in the valley, whose name was Delilah. The Lord of the Philistines came to her and said to her, Coax him and find out what makes his strength so great, and how we may, o may overpower him, so that we may bind him in order subdue to subdue him. And we will each give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes your strength so great and how you could be bound so that I could subdue you. Samson said to her, if they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that would not, that are not dried out, then I shall become weak and be like anyone else. Then the lords of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not dried out and she bound him with them. While men were lying in wait in an inner chamber, she said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he snapped the bowstrings as a strand of fiber snaps when it touches the fire, so the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have mocked me and told me lies. Please tell me how you could be bound. He said to her, If they bind me with new rope that have not been used, then I shall become weak and be like anyone else. So Delilah took new rope and bound him with them and said to them, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. The men lying in wait are in the inner chamber, but he snapped the ropes off his arms like a thread. Then Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me how you could be bound. He said to her, If you weave the seven locks of my head with the web that makes it tight with the pin, then I shall become weak and be like anyone else. So while he slept, Delilah took seven locks of his hair and wove them into the web and made them tight with a pin. Then she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep and pulled away the pin and the loom and the web. Then she said to him, How can you say, I love you, when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me three times now and have not told me what makes your strength so great. Finally, she had nagged him with her words day after day and pestered him. He was tired to death, so he told her his secret to her. A razor has never come to my head that I have been to God from whom my mother's womb. If my head were shaven, then my strength would leave me. I would become weak like anyone else. When Delilah realized uh, that he had told her his whole secret, she sent the call to the lords of the, of the Philistines, saying, 
this time came, come up, for he has told me the whole secret to me. Then the lords of the Philistines came up and to her and brought her the money in her hands. She let him fall asleep on her lap, and she called a man and, and had him shave, his, shave off his seven locks of his head. He began to weaken, and his strength left him. Then she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. When he awoke from this sleep, he said, I will not go out of the other time and shake myself free. But he did not know what the Lord had left him. So the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes. They brought down to him Gaza and bound him with the bronze shackles. And he ground at the mill in the prison. But the hairs of his head began to grow again after he had been shaved. Like I said, a little bit of a lengthy scripture today. Our focus verse is 1 Peter 5, 8 of the NIV, which reads, Be alert and of somber mind. Your, inner, your enemy, the devil, prowls around uh, like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Our thought for today is, today I will keep my focus on God. And our writer today is Stephen Brady of Alabama. And these are the thoughts that he is sharing with us today. Autopilot. While I was in the U.S. Navy, I taught a course on the automatic pilot system used for naval aircrafts. This system enabled an aircraft to fly at a precise altitude attitude, and headed without pilot input. However, should another aircraft or obstacle appear in the path of the aircraft, the system would not change course to avoid the obstacle. Even though the aircraft could fly itself, the pilot had to be alert, and any impending danger would be taken action. Can you... Let's keep up. I'm gonna... Okay. Get my home base with a red dot okay. in the toy room. Okay. Sorry about that. Sometimes we put ourselves on autopilot, going through the motions of life without any input from God. When we stop listening for God's direction, we can easily run into trouble. Judges 16.20 says that the Lord departs from Samson, and he didn't know it. Although Samson was set to be apart from birth, then he ended up as a slave in Philistine. The challenges of life can easily disrupt our journey if we are not paying attention. When we keep our focus on God, we realize that God is constantly talking to us, providing course corrections to keep us in God's will for ourselves. And our prayer focus for today is pilots. I mean, that can happen so easily in life. You're just going about things. You're almost on autopilot and everything. And you just kind of forget to stop and look at the things around you. You forget to stop and look at the beauty. You forget to, to stop and, you know, look at maybe some of the pain that's around and everything. And ways that you can, you know, be of help and be of use and be of service. Um, definitely having children, um, whether they're your own children or just somebody's children that are near you and everything, they will definitely give you a fresh perspective. They're very curious little beings. Um, they ask questions all the time. It always gives you a new look and a new perspective. Um, but just being in a community with one another um, can help give you new perspective and help brainstorm ideas. Um, so often in times, you know, in a Bible study, um, sometimes even in our staff meetings, um, just different things throughout the course of the day. Somebody has, you know, an idea and then somebody has some input to it and then somebody has some input to that and it can change and morph over time um, into this beautiful act of service. Um, and, you know, the whole saying, two heads are better than one. The more thoughts and inputs that you can get from others around you and everything can help, you know, help you keep your constant focus on God. Um, because when we're just by ourselves and in our own lane and everything, it's so easy to, you know, get that distraction or to, you know, to not have those outside influences and you just be so laser focused that you can kind of forget the reason that you're in that lane and everything. 
So that's one of the great things about being in a community and in a community of faith, especially, is that, you know, although we can at times, you know, become laser focused, those little obstacles and everything along the way, they can actually be good things. They can help, you know, keep our focus. They can help keep us alert and everything for the task at hand. So let us pray. Faithful God, keep our eyes open and focused on you. Make us aware of the obstacles around us and guide us on the path that you would have us take. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, Miss Marilyn. Thank you for joining me. And good morning, Susan. Glad to see you as well. I hope everybody has a great rest of their cooler Tuesday. And I will see everybody back here again tomorrow and Wednesday. Take such good care.